All right, so today is the day we are going to start our class read aloud counting by sevens. Um, and so what I would like you to do is just have your um, writer's notebook out in front of you. And um, today you are just going to kind of get your mind wrapped around the characters in this book. So as you're listening to me read this out loud to you, I would like you to be jotting down things that stick out to you. Maybe things that the characters say or things about the character themselves. If you're starting to get a visual in your mind as I'm reading this book, draw that visual out. Um, I want you to just be using this time to sit back, relax, listen to me read a read aloud to you, but also be actively engaged in the words that you're hearing. Here we go, counting by sevens. Counting by sevens. Chapter one, Willow Chance. A genius shoots at something no one else can see and hits it. We sit together outside the Foster's Freeze at the sea green metal paint picnic table. All four of us. We eat soft ice cream, which has been plunged into a vat of liquid chocolate that then hardens to a crispy shell. I don't tell anyone that what makes this work is wax, or to be more accurate, edible food grade paraffin wax. As the chocolate cools, it holds the vanilla goodness prisoner. Our job is to set it free. Ordinarily, I don't eat ice cream cones, and if I do, I obsessed in such a precise way as to prevent even a drop of disorder, but not today. I am in a public place, and I am not even spying. And my ice cream cone is a big, drippy mess. And right now, someone that other people might find interesting. I am right now someone that other people might find interesting to observe. Why? Well, first of all, I'm speaking Vietnamese, which is not my quote unquote native tongue. I really like that expression because, in general, I think people don't give this contracting muscle credit for how much work it does. Contracting muscle meaning her tongue. I really like that expression because, in general, I think people don't give this contracting muscle credit for how much work it does. So, Thank you, tongue. Sitting here shaded by the afternoon sun, I'm using my Vietnamese whenever I can, which turns out to actually be pretty often. I'm talking to my new friend, Mai, but even her always surely and scary because he's older, big brother, Quang Ha, says a few words to me in their now only semi-secret language. Del Duke, who brought us here in his car, is quiet. He does not speak Vietnamese. I do not like to exclude people. I am the one who is always excluded, so now I know how that feels. But I'm okay with Mr. Duke being an observer. He is a school counselor, and listening is a big part of counseling. Or at least it should be. Mai does the lion's share of speaking and, and eating, and I give her my cone once I've had enough, and all I know for certain, with the sun on our faces and the sweet ice cream holding our, our attention, is that this is the day I will never forget. Seventeen minutes after our arrival, we are back in Del Duke's car. Mai wants to drive by Hagen Oaks, which is a park. Big geese live there year-round, and she thinks that I should see them. Because she's two years older than me, she falls into that trap of thinking all little kids want to stare at something like fat ducks. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate waterfowl. But in the case of Hagen Oaks Park, I'm more interested in the city's decision to plant native plants than I am the birds. But I think that by the look on Dell's face, and I can see his eyes in the rearview mirror, that he's not very excited about this thing either. So, but he drives by the park anyway. Kwong Ha is slumped in the seat, so I'm guessing he's happy he just didn't have to take the bus anywhere. At Hagen Oaks, no one at Hagen Oaks, no one gets out of the car because Dell says we need to go home. When we first got to the frost, Frosters Freeze, I called my mom to explain that I'd be getting getting back from school late, but when she didn't answer. I left a message. I did the same thing on my dad's cell phone, and it's strange that I hadn't heard from either one of them. If they can't answer the phone, they always quickly return my call. Always. There's a police car parked in the driveway of my house when Del Duke turns onto the street. The neighbors of the south of us moved out, and their place was in foreclosure. A sign on the dead front lawn said, Bank Owned. To the north are renters who I only see once every seven months and four days, who I have only seen once, seven months and four days ago, which was on the day that they arrived. I stare at the police car and I wonder if someone broke into that vacant house. Didn't mom say that it was trouble to have an empty place in the neighborhood? 
Didn't Ma, um, but that wouldn't explain why the police car was at our house in our driveway. As we got closer, I can see that there are two officers in the patrol car, and from the way they are slouched, it seems as if they have been there for a while, and all of a sudden I feel my whole body tense. In the front seat, Quang Ha says, what are the cops doing in your driveway? And my eye, Mai's eyes dart from her brother back to me. The expression on her face now looks to be one of a question. I think she wonders if my dad steals things, or if I have a cousin who hits people, or maybe I come from a whole family of troublemakers. We don't know each other very well, so all of this would be possibilities, I guess. But I'm silent. I'm late coming home. Did my mom and dad get so worried that they called the police? I left them messages. I told them I was going to be okay. I can't believe that they would do such a thing. Del Duke doesn't even have the car completely stopped before I open the door, which of course is dangerous. I get out and I head toward my house, and not even bothering with the red rolling luggage that's packed with my schoolwork. I've taken only two steps into the driveway before the door opens on the patrol car and the female officer appears. The woman has a thick ponytail of orange-colored hair. She doesn't even say hello. She just lowers her sunglasses and says, Do you know Roberta and James Chance? I try to answer, but my voice won't come out any louder than a whisper. <clears throat> yes? I want to add, but it's Jimmy Chance. No one calls my dad James, but for some reason I can't. The officer fumbles with her sunglasses, and even though she's dressed the part, the woman sees, seems to be losing all of her authority. She mumbles, okay, and you are... I swallow, but my mouth is suddenly dry, and I feel like there's a lump in my throat. <clears throat> I'm their daughter, I say. Del Duke is out of the car now, and he has my luggage with him, and as he starts across the sidewalk, Mai is right on his heels, and Quang Ha stays put. The second officer, a man, then comes around and stands next to his partner, but neither of them speaks. It's just silence. Horrible silence. And the two police officers turn their attention to Dell, and they both look ang anxious, and the female officer managed to say, um, and where do you fit in? <clears throat> Dell clears his throat, and suddenly it looks like he's sweating from every gland in his body, and he is barely able to speak. Um, I am D -D -D Dell D -D 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 Duke. I work as a counselor for the school district, and I see two of these k kids for counseling, and I'm just dr driving them home. I can see that both officers are instantly relieved, and the female officer begins nodding, showing her support, almost and almost enthusiasm as she does. A counselor, so she heard. I finally had enough voice to ask, heard what? But neither of the police look at me. They are all about Dell now. Um, sir, can we have a word with you, sir? I watch Dell's sweaty, wet hands release from the back of the vinyl luggage, and he follows the officers as they move away from me, away from the patrol car, and out to the still hot pavement of the street. Standing there, they huddle together with their backs turned so that as I watch, they look lit by the low end of the day sun like an evil three-headed monster. And that's what they are because their voices, while muffled, are still capable of being understood. I can clearly hear four words. There's been an accident. And after that, in whispers, comes the news that the two people I love most in the world are gone forever. No, 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 no! I need to rewind. I want to go back. Will anyone go with me? We're going to end our reading there for today. And I'd like you to take a second in your writer's notebook to jot down the feelings that you're having right now. I have goosebumps. Um... That was a powerful first chapter. What are your thoughts? Spend about five minutes writing anything and everything that you can down about your initial reactions to the book Counting by Sevens. We're going to talk about this more later this week. Let's get started.